I think the first thing to consider is that a lot of this growth is being driven by food inflation. So food inflation is running about 4.1%, which is actually at a four-year high. So these overall figures for the food part of the business is actually being flattered by, by food growth. Tesco says it didn't pass on as much to its customers because it worked with suppliers. Mm. You still think that this is that typical story which we looked for initially when there was a talk of inflation. It's usually positive for the retailers. Do you think it's just back to that same old story? I think there's, it's inevitable that a lot of these cost pressures have to be passed on to suppliers. If you look at a lot of the supply chain costs through, um, through the PPI data, then a lot of this has been passed on to consumers. Of course, if you look at the, the, the main drivers of inflation coming through food, transport and housing, that actually uh, those, three, uh, those three parts of the consumer basket account for about 50% of expenditure for the least affluent households. So this is having a knock-on impact on non-discretionary spending elsewhere, and this is the, the effect of what we're seeing in general merchandise as well. So if you, if you look at, forget about the, the, the results that they've published, guidance. Mm. Considering that most analysts and everybody in the street is looking at inflation creeping up, a little bit further into the year, precisely coming from food, energy and housing, what about the guidance? Do you believe in the guidance that they're giving? Everybody's saying that they're keeping their guidance. Is it at risk? We think that things are actually going to get a little bit tougher before yeah. things start to ease. So our forecasts are for inflation to have peaked around about now. Mm. We expect it to fall by about 2.5% by around about the spring and by about 2.2% by the end of the year. So in terms of real incomes, real incomes are in negative territory. They've yeah. been in negative territory for around about six months. We don't think we'll see real growth in earnings until about the middle of 2017, and that's when we think things will start to pick up. But there's other pressures as well, pressures on credit, pressures on Brexit, the effect that this is having on, uh, on consumer confidence. All of these are key, th uh, you know, key components that will, uh, that will affect consumer demand. Um, so, just put put a, oh, sorry, okay. yeah, so we should put a little bit of, of at least a little bit of caution on these guidance uh, for the year at least. That, that's our perception is that the, the consumer environment will still will get tougher before it gets better. Um, the the two things. Tesco's CEO says he's really happy with the pricing position of Tesco's over Christmas. Now that's what uh, Dave Lewis is saying, but the shares are seen down 2% after missing expectations. 1.9% increase in like for like. Again, it was respectable, but apparently the analysts were looking for a much bigger figure, up as high as 3.2%. Um, I was tough on Melks and Spencers. I said they were pretty rubbish figures as well, and that actually they should be doing better after all these years on a negative 2.8% on clothing and home. Have I been too tough? It's, it's a tough consumer environment out there, and I think one of the things that we haven't mentioned as well, of course, is the, this relentless shift towards online. So we've actually done our own research, and we found that s about two-thirds of consumers did some of their shopping online. So while, con while especially m uh, companies like Marks & Spencers, those incumbent traditional retailers, they, they are, they, they're burdened with lots of stores, with long, uh, with long leases, upward only rent reviews, yet they're seeing this seismic shift in the way that consumers are spending their money. And so there's the soft consumer environment, but their business models are under intense pressure That's as well. Really